Welcome wherever you're watching around the country. Uh, there's few better places on the planet than the Gold Coast when it's in this kind of mood. Absolutely beautiful and plenty of spaces out there for everybody on the beach. The surf's been a little bit off today. It's been a nor'easterly flattening it a little bit, but uh, the shopping's good. Everything's good about visiting the Gold Coast, particularly this time of year, because you can come racing and uh, maybe even buy a share in a horse at the sales, which brings me to Francesca Camani again. And uh, Francesca's going to take you through a little bit of a buyer's guide about how to work your way through the sale. Thanks Cameron. Well, it's all quiet here now at the Magic Million sales, but this week it's been bristling with excitement and hope, everyone looking to find the next big thing. So what's the secret to finding a champion racehorse? Well, if we knew, we'd all be millionaires, but is it luck? Is it science? I think it's a bit of both, but one thing's for sure, everyone's looking for something a little bit different. Your most famous moment at the sales, probably when you bought Black Caviar. What was it about her that caught your eye? Oh, love at first sight. Wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> no, nah, she was a lovely filly. She was a big, strong filly, a, a massive strength, massive stride. Just a beautiful mover for a big horse. Haven't found one since, but hopefully one day. You said it was love at first sight. Do you go a lot on instinct and first impressions? Everything. Everything's about first impressions, gut instinct, yeah. First time you see them, you've got to like them. Don, you've bought a few horses in your time. What, what, what do you look for in a yearling? Oh, uh, the breeding, naturally. I, I normally go for something I've had something to do with in the past. Uh, Mum or Dad, I've raced or I've raced horses for so long, there's always something in the family I can relate to. That was a good day. <laughs> Before I landed here at the sales, I'd seen about 600 yearlings. So you've seen pretty much every horse in the sale seen every before. Horse. And then do you look at them again here? I, I, I see every horse once, hopefully on the farm, and then I come and see them here, and if I like them, I see them a third, sometimes a fourth time. And see if they I love to see a horse that's what I call copping it on the chin. You know, if they're being brought out all the different parades, then it doesn't seem to worry them, because that's a horse that'll do well in my yard. You know yourself, if they've got the right attitude, there's no, no worry, that they'll cope with anything. And how much emphasis do you put on pedigree and how much on looks? I think first and foremost, you have to find the, the, the athlete and the specimen, so looks comes first. And pedigree also is obviously a massive factor, but it would be coming second. And it's lovely when you get both of them coming together as one. Well. So when I look at the yearling, there are three main things I do. One, look at the page in the catalogue, see who it's by, who the mare is, what date it was foaled on, and what stud it's been brought up at. And then I look at the horse itself, how it is as a physical specimen, whether I, whether I like the horse really, and then look at its limbs to see if it's what we call correct. So this is a, is a lovely tale of a cat colt from Mythos stud, Rosemont stud. Looking at him side on, just try and assess it, he's a good size. Everything's in proportion, he's got a nice strong hind quarter, a good strong shoulder. He's not too unbalanced, he's lovely in, in proportion. And then we check that they're what we call correct. So you stand front on, and just really seeing that all the limbs are nicely in line. It's a bit like with a human, you know, if you see someone standing very pigeon-toed, or they turn out, or they're not mead. It's a bit similar, obviously they're not going to make very good athletes because this is all we get to see of the horse. We get to see it standing and walking, and that's when you've got to judge whether it's going to be a good racehorse or not. And when he walks, all I want to see is that he's nice and athletic and loose in his movement. Also, you're looking a little bit for temperament here. If he's very stubborn or difficult or unwilling, it's not a great sign. Oh. <laughs> hey, little man. He's a, he's a nice little colt. <laughs> And how, how crucial is the vet in, in terms of checking out faults? I have great respect for vets, but personally I don't use them at this stage. Um, I back my own judgement. Uh, I'm looking for a horse that's an athlete, and I'm backing my judgement to be able to decide whether they can overcome the faults that they may have. What's the main thing you look for when buying a yearling? Uh, I look for a little bit of length and a nice hind quarter. Oh, yeah, big hindquarter and maybe a loose mover. Okay. 
Okay. And is it the, the looks or the pedigree that's more important for you? I prefer the looks and then I look at the uh, pedigree as a price barometer. I treat it like the suburb. I look at the house first and then the suburb values it. Uh, if you like them, then you go dissecting them and seeing if you can work with the faults they've got. And if they've got no faults, you usually walk away because they end up in the pony club ring. <laughs> As we heard from the trainers, they've all got their own independent methods. And there doesn't seem to be a right or a wrong way to pick a yearling. So just trust your instinct. If you're ever thinking of buying a horse, have a bit of fun with it. And remember, it doesn't need to break the bank. That's right, it's all about the fun because if you went into it thinking you're going to make a lot of money, you're bound to be disappointed. Although someone here today is going to have a very different experience from that. And uh, the tale of the cat cult that Mytho put through the ring, if you're curious about uh, the result that we got from him, $60,000. Uh, I like what David Hayes said, uh, you look at the house first and then use the suburb to tell you what you're going to have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good indicator, especially with some of those stallions nowadays, you'll pay above the odds for some of the uh, more fancied ones. Absolutely. They, they get on little streaks, don't they? Fastnet Rock is the hot one of the time because he's getting the results. When they're hot, they're hot, yeah. The beauty of this sale is though, like we get away from, it used to be just a concept for two-year-olds, but now you can bring a maiden here and win a $100,000 race. They can come here as eight-year-olds, ten-year-olds, you know, it's just a, a day for this sale, you know, it's a great concept. It does make a